Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for October 6, 2022. If you're new here to today's word, then this is a podcast for people who would love to learn more about the Bible, who would love to get the Bible in a way that is digestible, understandable, and that they can apply it to their daily lives. This is today's word. I do this every day. I've been doing it for 25 years. I get a word from God. I process it. I release it. I send it out on email. And then we do this right here. And then people receive it and they walk it out. And those that sign up for the email, get the notes and you can go over it and rehearse it and all of that. It's the word of God for daily living. It's daily application. I'm doing something today that I've never done before. I'm kind of, I'm going to teach the the message that is in this series, but at the same time, I'm going to give a tribute uh, to a, a mighty man of God somebody that was very special to me. So yesterday, uh, I was honored that there was a, I got a call, one of my good friends, unfortunately, or fortunately, however you see it. I mean, his assignment was done. So he went on to be with the Lord, Pastor Chris Jordan of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Pastor Chris was born in California. He moved around different places. He went to West Point and then uh, pastored. He was in New Jersey. And then the Lord called them to Rocky Mount, North Carolina. I, I met him years ago. Tremendous. I mean, this is salt of the earth kind of person. The Lord called him home. And I was honored uh, to, to be asked to preach his eulogy, to preach the funeral. And I was there. So many people were there. And so as I'm teaching this message this morning, when I got to it, I, of course, I have everything that, that from yesterday, like, you know, from the whole service, the ceremony, everything in my heart. And so I'm going to teach this message and deal with yesterday and weave it all together. So this is Pursuing Grace-Based Success, Part 15. Resting in God's love for your success, a tribute to the life of Pastor Chris Jordan. Man, this message is going to be special. Get ready to receive the word. All right, so let's get into the word for this morning. Our foundational scriptures, let's, there are three of them. Let's get through them. Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10. Now, this is put in the chat. I'm ready to receive. If you're ready to receive, I'm ready to receive. And so, uh, listen, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 says, I mean that you were saved. If you're born again, if you're saved, you were saved by grace, not by works. All you did was believe. You, you believe it's a gift from God, and you can't work for a gift. All you can do with a gift is receive it. Now, you're not saved by the things that you've done. So you have nothing to boast about. (laughs) Verse 10 says, God made us what we are in Christ Jesus. God made us a new creation so that we could spend the remainder of our days doing the good works, the good works that God had before ordained for us to do. So say this, say, I have work to do. You can put that in the chat. There are some good works that I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm not doing the good works to be saved. I'm doing the good works because I'm saved. I'm not doing works for grace. I'm doing works by grace. And there's a revelation of a difference. First Corinthians chapter one, verses 30 and 31 from the new living. The Bible says, God has united you with Christ Jesus. Now for our benefit, God made him Jesus to become wisdom itself. So now you have access to wisdom. And so now that you're in Christ Jesus, you have access to wisdom and the father made you right with him because of Jesus. So I'm the righteousness of God say I'm righteous. And God made you pure and holy and freed you from sin all because of Jesus. So you have nothing to boast about. Like if you're going to boast in anything, you have to boast in God because he's the one that has all wisdom and gives you wisdom. He's the one who made you pure. He's the one who made you holy. He's the one that freed you from sin. It's not about you. It's all about him. And so you have to, you have nothing to boast about. It's all about him. You got it? Second Timothy 1 and 9, last foundational scripture. The Bible says God saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our own works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. So he gave us a purpose and the grace for the purpose, an assignment and the grace for the assignment in Christ Jesus before the world began. It's not about us. It's all about him. So in yesterday's message, I mentioned these two scriptures. Let me get into them and then we'll keep going. Uh, So 1 John 4 and 16, the Bible says, so we know the love that God has for us and we trust in that love. Another translation says, we know the love and we believe the love. Say, I believe the love. 
So you have to know the, the love that God has for you. And then you got to trust in that love. You got to believe the love. Galatians 5 and 16 says, once you're in Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision mean anything. The only thing that matters now is faith and faith works by love. Now I can get into the message. So yesterday I was there in Rocky Mount, North Carolina, preaching the celebration of life ceremony for Pastor Chris Jordan. Uh, this man was amazing. He was a pastor, a pastor, a leader in his community, a tremendous blessing. A husband and father, his family is amazing, right? He was the personification of what it means to be a son of God, a child of the most high God. He was God's son for sure, right? I mean, he it, he only sought to be a blessing to every, everybody that came in contact with him came in contact with Jesus, right? He was the personification of it. So as I was preaching his eulogy, um, I'm like, man, I, re I really need to make sure, Lord, that we honor this man correctly because he was, I mean, he was the personification of your love on this planet. And so as I seek to do my best, I still have to deal with the harsh realities of death. I mean, so while we're there, you know, of course, I'm honoring Pastor Chris and his legacy. I made it clear that Pastor Chris was not there. Like his, his remains were there, like the remains of his physical body, but Pastor Chris was already with the Lord. And so a couple of things that I had to deal with for the living is that tomorrow is not promised. Here's some things, whenever I do a, a home going celebration or funeral, you have to remember that tomorrow is not promised to anyone. You got to remember that life is a vapor, right? You, your time on this planet is limited. You could be here today and gone today. <laughs> and so you got to make the most of the one life that God gave you. So we must do all we can while we can to do what God sent us to this planet to do, which is why I teach you the grace life. Because if you try to take on the pressure to perform, if you try to take on like this... Uh, ooh, what am I going to do? Like, you know, the pressure to perform. God, I'm, I need to do this. I need to do that. Then you're going to get stressed out trying to do the will of God. No, God never designed you like that. God designed you to enter into his rest, to believe in his love, to trust in his grace, and he will use you in a mighty way so that you can be used of God in a mighty way and you're not stressed out over it. You got it? It's the grace life. This is I'm not telling you something I read. This is how I live. So what does this mean for you today? A few things. I'm going to share with you a few things uh, this morning. The first thing is, number one, true success in life can only be found in your divine purpose. Now, I've made this point to you like umpteen times. I've told you this many, many times. Uh, but in yesterday's message while I was preaching, I've told you before many times, you cannot measure success in houses or cars or money or titles or none of that. You measure success in purpose. While I was preaching, I said, hey, I, this is how I spell success. P-U-R-P-O-S-E. Success is measured in purpose. Pastor Chris is a success. He was able to go home and his father was waiting on him and said, well done, glory. He, not only was his father waiting on him and said, well done, but then he had family members. He had family members, watch this, family members who died before he was born in his bloodline that received Jesus that he doesn't even know that were waiting on him when he got there, glory to God. And it was this, this family reunion. Why? Because he did well. Well done, my good and faithful servant. He pursued God's purpose. Will you be able to say the same? This is why I live my life the way that I live my life. This is why we run so hard. This is why we do everything that we do. Why? Because we only get one life. You only get one life. And so, so you want to do what it is that God has called you to do. I said to them yesterday, which is something I tell you all the time, uh, you got to find it, follow it and finish it and get it done before you die. You find it, you discover your purpose, you follow it, you develop in your purpose, you finish it, you deploy into your purpose. And your goal is to get it done before you die, to die empty, to get out of you everything that God deposited in you while you're in the land of the living. Pastor Chris did that. So we were able to celebrate him. I mean, like it was like, you know, a celebration of life ceremony. It's a life and legacy. And he lives on in the hearts of all of the people that he left the deposit in. So when you live this way, when you are a faithful servant, when you are submitted to God, when you yield to him, when you allow God to give you the words and perform the work, when you, when you trust in God's grace, God will send people into your office for you to pour into them. God will have people call you on the phone so you can pour into them. God will, you, God will set up divine appointments. You could be in Walmart and somebody will walk up to you. God will set up moments for you to make Make a deposit in the life of somebody else and your life and your legacy will outlive you. And so even when you're in heaven, your heart, your legacy lives on because you made a deposit in other people, but it wasn't you. 
It was the grace of God in you. That's how we're supposed to live. Say amen to that. Say God uses me. Put this in the chat. God uses me and I'm aware of it. Like you got to be aware of the fact that God uses us in a mighty way. You got to be cognizant of the fact that I am being used and I know it. There's this awareness that is outside of me that there's moments where I'm talking to somebody and in that moment while I'm talking to somebody, there's this consciousness that is outside of me that is telling me, oh my God, this is not me. And so I'm talking to somebody, but I know I'm not talking, it's not me. God is using me in that moment and God is making a deposit in that moment and God is encouraging and inspiring and edifying and building up in that moment. And there's this awareness that is outside of me. I'm aware of the fact that I'm being used. I'm aware of the fact that I'm a conduit. I'm aware of the fact that God is giving me words and performing work. I'm aware. I I said, come on, man. I'm telling you this. God uses you and you know it. Say amen to that. This is how we're supposed to live. I'm excited this morning if you you can't tell. All right, number two. This is going to be good. This is going to be good. Number two, embracing the grace of God takes the spotlight and the pressure off of you. you. You are alleviated from the pressure to perform. Say that out loud or you can say it in the chat. I am alleviated from the pressure to perform. I, so, so God removes the pressure to perform off my life. Why? Because I put the spotlight of my life squarely on him. I keep saying this because I want you to get it down in your heart. God wants to bless you because God wants to bless you because God is good. God wants to bless you because God wants to bless you because God God was, is not trying to bless you because you're perfect because you're not. God is not trying to bless you because you do everything right because you don't. God wants to bless you because God wants to bless you because God is good. Not necessarily because you deserve it. God wants to bless you because God is a good God. And the mo- if you ever can get it, I've been preaching this to you for years. Can you please get it? God wants to bless you because God wants to bless you because God is good. It's not about you. It's about him. It's all about him. When you settle the fact that God loves me, put this in the chat. I am God's beloved. You can put in the chat. I am God's favorite. When you put it, when you get convinced, I'm fully persuaded. God loves me with an un- unconditional love. God wants to use me because God wants to use me because God is good. I am God's favorite. I am God's child. I am God's beloved. Do I make mistakes? Yes. I'm not perfect. But, but when I do make a mistake, I receive forgiveness from God. I forgive myself. And I keep stepping. I'm not going to allow the devil to get me into guilt and shame and condemnation. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. I receive forgiveness and I keep going. I am God's child. I am God's favorite. I am God's beloved. I am the one God's love, the the one that God loves. I I, I can sing that song from Maverick City. I'm the one you love. There's room at your table for me. My God, you ever go to an an event and, and, and you look at like the seating chart and you're like, who am I seated with? And they go, well, you, you could be there and there's somebody you really wanted to be seated with, but there's no room at that table for you. And God says, there's room at my table for you, son. I mean, like you look and you're like, oh man, I'm seated at the king's table. They got me listed at the king's table. Hey, babe, come on. We get to sit with the king. There's room at your table for me. I'm the one you love. I, I'm, I'm your favorite. I'm your child. You love me. I don't know why. I mean, I, I make more mistakes than I want to remember, but you love me and you use me anyway. It's the grace life. When you settle the issue of God's love and you take the focus off of you, stop being religious. Oh, God, I didn't do this right. Oh, God, I didn't do that right. Okay, fine. If you if you live that way, you're never going to be used of God. You got to get over yourself. Listen, it's not a, take the spotlight off of you. You're not that good. You're not that smart. Get over it. But if you, if you yield to God, if you allow him to do it, come on, man, I'm a witness. I'm a Dominican kid from Brooklyn. I was raised on welfare and God can use anybody. God, God is in the business of making champions out of cowards, of making champions out of, out of nobody. Listen, if you give your life, if you put your life in his hands, there's nothing God can't do. Pastor Chris Jordan, as we were honoring and celebrating his life yesterday, it was evident to me, it has been evident to me for years, this was a man who relied on the grace of God. During the funeral, there was a man who got up, one of his friends, several people got to speak, and and one of his friends got up, and and this man (laughs) talked about how different he was from Pastor Chris. And how when when somebody from New Jersey came down to Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, and it was like, have you met him yet? And he was like, oh, I don't know. And so he went to go meet him. And this dude is real country. And uh, he was telling this story. And he was, you know, he, he looked different, completely different than Pastor Chris. He said, well, I asked him. I said, how'd you get here? He said, he said well, we were driving to Atlanta. 
And, and the Lord, once we got to Rocky Mount, the Lord told, just instructed us to go into Rocky Mount. And that's how we wound up here. And the guy said, hmm, I, I think that's suspicious. <laughs> and the guy, so anyway, they built a friendship. Uh, they were not like, you know, he, he, he acknowledged that they were very different, like almost opposites. And he said this about his friend. He said, Chris did not care about money. He did whatever he thought God wanted him to do. And he believed that God would supply all his need according to his riches and glory. And then he paused. He said, well, I believe God helps those who help themselves. And when he said that, there was a lot of laughter and people got a kick out of it. But let me talk about it for a minute. Well, that sounds funny and it sounds good and all of that. Just a few days ago, I told you there's two primary ways to live. You can either live your life based on your power, your ability, your strength, your, your ability to perform, or you can live your life based on God, his goodness, his grace, and his love towards you, trusting God the entire way. While Pastor Chris's friend said something funny, what he was really saying was, Pastor Chris trusted God. Pastor Chris did stuff that he didn't have the money for. He launched out into projects that he was not prepared for or qualified for, but he believed that God, if God was leading him, wherever God leads, God feeds. Wherever God guides, God provides. I'm not that way. I'm more practical. I'm more pragmatic. I want to see it first. I want to have the answers first. I want to make sure the math makes sense first, and then I'm going to do it this way. And while while that sounds you know good to a lot of people, yeah, let's be pragmatic. Let's be practical. The truth is, there's too much of you in the way if you live that way. You're not living by faith if you're just trusting in yourself. If you have to, if you're not going to do a project until all the math adds up, then you'll never do a project God tells you to do because he ain't, he's going to make sure the math don't add up. If you if you're only going to launch out into something that makes sense to you, then you're never going to just do everything God tells you to do because he's going to tell you to do things that don't make no sense. The the funeral was packed. People were there from California, New York, New Jersey, Virginia, Georgia, all of these places. This man preached the gospel for over 40 years. And he, he trusted God in the process. Why? Because he lived the grace life. He lacked nothing. But for him, success was not a matter of cars or houses. And, and he was blessed. No, but for him, success was simply a matter of doing whatever God tells you to do, however God tells you to do it. And so listen, life is simple. When you live the grace life, life is simple. You just do whatever God tells you to do, however God tells you to do it. Now, there's going to be times where it doesn't make sense, but if you believe God and you live by faith, it will be amazing. I've told you many times that when people read the book of your life story, God wants to be the star on every page. And I can tell you that Pastor Chris Jordan yesterday, as the church was packed and all of these people there, people watching online, God was the star of his life story. I mean, he, he personified, he personified Jesus, like, like his life, the story of his life was the story of Jesus. The celebration of his life was the celebration of Jesus. I said, while I was preaching that, that pastor Chris, he could say what, what Jesus said in John 14. If you've seen me, you've seen the father, right? The words that I speak, they're not my words. The works that I perform, they're not my works. It's the father who lives in me. He gives me the words and he performs the work. Pastor Chris personified first John 4 and 17 as Jesus is so am I in this world. And I pray that you and I get there where we can, where the celebration of our life will be a celebration of Jesus, where, where we get to the point where, where the celebration of our life is all about him. If you ever get to the point where the celebration of your life is going to be the celebration of Jesus, I'm telling you, you are living an amazing life. It is the grace life. I started this point by telling you this, embracing the grace of God takes the spotlight and the pressure off of you. The life of Pastor Chris is a great example of that. He ventured into projects he knew nothing about. He did it by faith. He launched into projects he didn't have the money for. He did it by faith. He, he didn't take on the pressure to perform. Why? Because the spotlight was not on him. The spotlight was on God. When you live this way, you take on no pressure to perform. And once the burden is off of you, say, say there's no burden on me. Say, I take on no pressure to perform. So once the, the spotlight is off of you, the burden is off of you, you have no pressure to perform. Now you can go, God is free to do in you, with you, through you, what, what you could never do without him. Why? Because now your life is not about you. Your life is all about him. Number three, and finally, last point for today, you limit God when you focus too much on yourself. 
You limit God when you focus too much on yourself. As we celebrated the life of Pastor Chris Jordan yesterday, it was a blessing to me to hear how many hats he wore, like in Rocky Mount, North Carolina and in the surrounding areas. He was like the pastor of this and the chaplain for that, right? He was the chair of this and then the board of that. He was the president of this and the overseer of that. But I mean, like you read, it was like he was, he had so many roles, so many hats. Why? Because he yielded to the grace of God. People ask Isabella and I, how do you do all the things that you do? Well, I tell them that number one, we only try to do, attempt to do what God is leading us to do. But number two is the grace of God. We only seek whatever God tells us to do and we do it by the grace of God. And that's why we do so many things. If you ever get to the point where you die to self, and you embrace the grace of God, you will even die to your limits. God's plans are so big that we often feel unworthy of them. See, God is limitless, but we in our flesh, we are limited. This is why God, or let me say it this way, this is why it's sometimes difficult for us to, to do what God wants us to do because we're focused too much on ourselves. If you die to yourself, you will die to your limits. Put that in the chat. I die to myself and I die to my limits. If you die to yourself and you die to your limits, then your life will be all about him. And at that point, it will be an amazing life. See, when it comes to purpose, if you come up with it, it will be too small for God. But when God comes up with it, it will be too big for you. God calls us into projects that exceed our bank account, our education, our experience, and our connections. But if you just yield to him and believe what God believes about you, God will do through you what you could never do without him. If you feel unworthy of the task, it's because you're thinking too much about yourself. And if you think too much about yourself, instead of relying on the grace of God, you're going to mess around and disqualify yourself from something you never qualified for. Jesus qualified you in the first place. So say this, say, I qualify. The reason why you qualify is because Jesus qualified you. God didn't give you the assignment because you're good. He gave it to you because he is good. God didn't give you the assignment because you earned it. He gave you the assignment by unearned grace. All you have to do is what Pastor Chris did, believe and receive. So as I close, believe in God's plans for your life accept his best by grace, pursue your purpose by faith, and trust God the entire way. You got to trust God in the process. As you trust God, as you believe in the love of God, God is going to use you in a mighty way. Why? Because it's not about you. It's all about him. Let's close this message out. Put it's all about him in, in the chat. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and speak this over your life. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about grace-based success. You are a great God. You made plans for me from the foundations of the world. And the more you reveal those plans to me, the more I realize how big they are. Your plans are far too big for me to ever accomplish without you. Your plans for my life cause me to rely on your supernatural power. Without you, I cannot. But without my cooperation, you will not. Therefore, Father, I'm committed to providing faith where you have already provided grace. My faith works because I'm fully persuaded that you love me and I trust in your love. My faith works because my faith is rooted and grounded in your unyielding love for me. I will succeed in life, but not because of me, only because of you. My confidence is in you, and this is how I know greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. You know tomorrow, we'll have another one. So this is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, you want my notes, you get my notes for free. Go to todaysword.org, click on the big red subscribe button. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, I love you. God loves you more. Do me a favor. Leave me some comments in the chat. If this message was a blessing to you, leave me some comments right now in the chat, and then share this message on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. Have an amazing day.
Walk in the blessing. Greater is coming for you. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you. If you enjoyed this content and you would like to learn more about our ministry or you would like to partner with our ministry, please visit ripministries.org. You will learn there what we're doing in the Caribbean, providing a Christ-based education to Haitian children in the Dominican Republic. We also provide them a hot meal every day. If you would like to partner with us, click on the donate button. All the donations are tax deductible in the United States. If you don't have my book, Level Up Your Life, go to rickpina.co and get the book today. From rickpina.co, you'll also see that I have journals and I also have some other products and apparel and etc. all centered around the grace life. And then lastly, if you enjoy this content, but you want direct access to Isabella and I, the Lord impressed it upon my heart for Isabella and I to start mentoring people, giving people access to us to be able to ask us questions. We're answering questions about ministry, about missions, nonprofit, for-profit. I'm addressing things uh, as far as how I preach, our approach to preaching. We're putting out private content just for a specific group in the Patreon. So please visit patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina if you're interested in this material. Have an amazing day.